Welcome back everyone to the second episode in building desktop application with Blazor and Elkitron.net. Today in this session we will see how the, the architecture of Elkitron apps and how it works. Basically, let's see that or let's assume that this is our Elkitron application. Elkitron depends on the Chromium which is the open source uh, version of Google Chrome. So it has its own browser uh, engine to render the web pages. So you can see here in HLKtron application there is an or HLKtron application has its own browser. So it's a browser itself that's based on Chromium. Elkitron also based on Node.js. Node.js runtime uh, like implement the communication between the new the Elkitron application and the native capabilities of the operating system uh, that communication happens via the Elkitron, the new GS runtime here and right now we have our Blazor application Elkitron ships all this three type of applications or frameworks together and package them inside a one executable application that can be served for all the platforms Windows, Mac OS and Linux because that .NET Core can run across the platforms also so we can publish our Blazor application as a standalone so we don't need the, the client shouldn't download or the .NET Core runtime because the standalone version has all the DLLs required to run the application and with Elkitron.net which is the version of Elkitron specified for .NET, which is a porting version from the Elkitron GS, uh, supported the activation of the .NET Core or the ASP.NET Core applications from within the Elkitron app. So we have our server, we have the web browser, and here we have the new GS that communicates with the uh, operating system native capabilities. In this case, we have a full desktop application that can work offline. Let's see exactly behind the scene what happens. Here we have our Elkitron application. Each Elkitron application consists of a main process, only one main process that uh, runs via the new JS runtime. Now, the main process is responsible for creating browser windows and each browser window associated with a renderer process. Our web page opens here within each one of those windows. And as you know, the browser uh, or any website runs in the browser it runs in a sandbox environment, which means this application is very restricted. Uh, it doesn't have all the capabilities to deal especially with the operating system. It has just only its job. For example, one of the capabilities that it can do, which is reading the file when you try to upload a file. But you cannot write a file. You cannot execute comments on the operating system. You cannot do anything. The website is very restricted. So in the Elkitron case, each window is running here with its render process. So, when it needs to talk to the operating system, uh, the renderer process communicates with the main process. In turn, this process communicates with the operating system and retrieves the results back to those process. And we will see also within the scores how we can implement the communication between those processes themselves. This is a general idea about how the Elkitron app works. So, Let's have a look about what are the advantages and disadvantages of building an Elkitron applications. The first and the major advantage of building apps with Elkitron is you have one code base across the platforms. You don't have to write any specific code for each platform. You have one UI and uh, one logic for your application which is enough. So in this way, in this case you can ship your applications very quickly, your end customers you can update and uh, maintain your application also in like specific uh, manner you don't have to ship the updates once for windows then for linux or mac like you can with, with elkitron you can ship all of them together with the same code base another great advantage is using html and css for design and as you know html and css has a very huge community this is number one number two it serves different kind of applications, especially for the modern apps. Right now, we have too many applications run on the browser, from Microsoft Azure, for example, Office. So HTML and CSS do a very great job in design. It's very, very flexible and gives us all the capabilities we need 
to design a very good interface. Also, as I've said, we have very great community because at the end it's a web application. So whenever you're stuck on something, you can go for Stack Overflow, GitHub or whatever. You can find the answers for your questions and the help from people. And also, there are too many third-party libraries existing out there because the web is very common. There are hundreds and thousands of plugins available for Blazor or for JS. And because Blazor is able to communicate with JS via JS interrupt, you can also leverage that uh, libraries for your applications. So Elkitron is a very, very great choice. And this is why uh, Microsoft and other huge companies like also Facebook go with Elkitron to build their apps across for desktop application across the platforms. Now, well, the disadvantages of the Elkitron application is the size. Actually, the size is a little problem with the uh, Elkitron apps because a uh, normal application, very simple application, uh, costs about 100 megabyte, which is too much, if, especially if you compare it with a native application. And this is because a lot of dependencies you have, as I've said, there is an, each application has its own browser, the dependencies that the Chromium has, the Electron JS runtime, and uh, in our case, the Blazor app, so this is an issue. The second thing is the lack of performance and also if you compare it with the native apps. Uh, because here there are some working around to get the job done. Mm, not like the native apps when you, for example, develop a UWB application for Windows 10. You can directly communicate with the capabilities of the Windows. But here the render process has to take to the main process. The main process uh, via Node.js has to communicate with the capabilities of uh, each operating system and they are developed with C++ and Objective-C so there is, uh, there is some binding in the middle so this leads to some lack in the performance of the application but because of all the modern application that uh, runs a huge memory for example about 16 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte right now at minimum so this app can run very very smoothly without uh, noticing that issues Right now, Elkitron started in 2013 via GitHub, the first release, but it was for JS. So the people who develop uh, web apps with JS, like Angular, React, or whatever, they are very easily, they can move that application to desktop. But about two years ago, thanks for the community out there, they developed or they ported the Elkitron JS for Elkitron.net. So right now our SP.NET Core application can be activated by Elkitron and in addition to this, they can communicate with the new modules to leverage the capabilities of the operating system. So in this case, we can build a full desktop applications with ASP.NET Core. But uh, Blazor, uh, because it's very flexible, it's a very amazing technology, uh, especially with the our components architecture that makes developing applications is just something like playing Lego or that you have very small parts that integrated together in a very good way. So in this case, you can develop applications very quickly with the Blazor. And uh, with the Razor also for the UI, how you can render the HTML, that's very, very powerful. But in our case, as you know, there is Blazor server and Blazor WebAssembly. Blazor WebAssembly made to develop full single page application that runs in the browser via the WebAssembly runtime. But when you try to build an Elkitron apps, I highly recommend to go with the Blazor server for multiple reasons. The disadvantages you have with the Blazor server and Elkitron, they are not existing. For example, the high latency you have when you, when the, your browser communicate with the server, there is a high latency because every change in the UI has to be rendered by the server, then send the updates back from the server to the client. This leads to a huge latency, but here it's not existing because the Blazor server, the server is run on the client. So in this case, there is no latency. This is number one. Number two, uh, the web Blazor web assembly can run offline via progressive web apps and something like this. The Blazor server case, you cannot do this while you are developing websites because the application has to be stay connected with the server. But here, it's also not the case because as I've said, the server is on the client so there is no need for connection between 
the client and the server because they are all in the same machine and in the same environment with the Elkitron application. So that was a very really quick introduction, like somehow. Right now, let's see what we need to, go, to be able to build an Elkitron application with Blazor and Elkitron. Here, the first thing you can get your code editor, the best for you. Uh, for cross-platform, actually, the most common code editor in the world, which is Visual Studio Code. I prefer to work on the Visual Studio for Windows, but because I'm a Windows user, uh, I can use it. But if you are using Mac or Linux, uh, you cannot. You can uh, use uh, Visual Studio for Mac, but for Linux. Ah, so at the end, you have to go for co uh, Visual Studio Code is the best choice. Then you need to have a .NET Core 3.1 Lattice SDK. You can download it from here. I will put all the links in the description box. Make sure also you have a Node.js installed in your machine. You can hear from nodejs.org slash download to the best version suitable for your PC. And here we have the documentation related to the Elkitron GS. And this is the repository of the Elkitron.net. So in this video, we have seen how we can or how the Elkitron app works uh, somehow. So right now, in the next video, we will start initializing our first project and start the real action with it. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and share button and see you in the next video.